welcome back everyone to the Maritime CEO Leader Series uh, powered by the Ocean Technologies Group. It's our chance for a, a natter with uh, some of the most interesting people in shipping. And today we are in Norway uh, with Lasse Christofferson from Claverness. So here he is. Um, thank you very much for joining us. You're busy, 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 so I'm going to be as quick as I can. Um, Splash readers are convinced that this current crisis is going to see a huge take up in the the speed with which we employ digital developments around shipping. You yeah. are a company that uh, has been a bit of a first mover in all of this, uh, you know, somewhat ahead of the curve, seemingly from afar from as far as I can see. Um, so what advice can you give to those who are now paying quite a, a late catch up game? <laughs> Yeah, good question. Well, first of all, I'm not sure if we're ahead of the curve or not, but certainly we've been thinking of this and working with this for a while. So hopefully we're, we're there. But, but I think a couple of comments to that. One is when these things happen, we tend to overestimate how fast changes come, but underestimate the implications of the change itself. And so also, I think for this virus and for the technology and, and digital around it, that I think the long term effects are very deep, but I don't think there will we will be working very differently in August or in November, honestly. Hopefully, at least, though, people are, are uh, more comfortable with using communication technology and, and, uh, and that you can see uh, meetings and deals done without physical presence. I mean, that, that's the immediate one, but, but still, I think human beings are, uh, we like to be part of a clan, we like to see our colleagues and, and we'd like to chat out. So, you know, eventually we're a social tribe and, and, and I don't think that will go away. When it comes to uh, the digital, for us in, in Cloudless, we have been very much focusing in, in, in three areas of, of digital. I mean, one is how can we use technology to make the life of our customers easier and, and more efficient? Um, and, and in that respect, I'm very happy to see that we've been a little bit ahead of the curve. And now we have big companies like BHP, Alcoa, Hydro, you name it, using our cargo value platform. And several of them have said that they don't know how they would have managed this situation without having online information about what was going on in their logistics chain. So, so in, in, in one sense, uh, what we have done in digital has already, all, you know, already proven its value for our customers. Uh, the two other things we work on is how can we use data and analytics better in decision making? Uh, which becomes even more important when you sit alone in your own house and, and basically what you have is data. Uh, and last but not least, how can we use technology to improve the efficiency and quality of our processes? Uh, we talk about robotization and, and what have you. Um, and, and I think also there, I, I believe that this crisis helps people seeing that a lot of the stuff we do could have been done better by machines, but there's a lot of stuff we do between people that cannot be replaced by machines. You mentioned there, um, sort of, you know, we won't know uh, what the sort of long-term trend might be from this coronavirus crisis by November. But you know, crystal ball gazing. Uh, obviously, mm. we've mentioned digital take up. Um, what, in terms of the actual our daily business lives, and also perhaps the trades that you are involved in, can you see us sort of before and after coronavirus? change in life and, 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 and as I say, the trades that you're involved in as well? In life, I think this will change how we think of, of uh, pandemics and risks, definitely. So it will change how each one of us approach you know, our personal health, that's for sure. And that will, of course, also affect our seagoing personnel and probably we need to rethink some stuff. I mean, we, in the future, uh, the scenario of our people on board the vessels not being allowed to go ashore, it, it was not there. Now we have actually to make sure that how can we ensure people who would like a career at sea not to be stuck there, right? So, so I think there are issues coming up that we've not seen before. When it comes to the business side of things, you're talking to an optimist. Let me start there. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I don't think the world ever go in reverse. It just find different ways of going forward. Uh, and globalization is here by a reason. Uh, and the reason is that it's better for all. And something that is better for all eventually will strive, but then you have some, you know, it goes fast for some while and, and it less pace for some times. Uh, 
but I think globalization in itself is is not going to be reversed, but we certainly will see some issues around it. Uh, and I think, uh, but I think on the physical trades, if you look on the on the need to move iron ore to China or uh, diesel and gasoline across the Atlantics or container boxes around the world. I don't think that will fundamentally change. It will, of course, have an impact in terms of demand and people use less and we shut down the society, but all that is short term. So, uh, but I think on the other hand, what really will have a long term effect, which is part of our industry and part not this, is of course the, let's say, the, the leisure industry, where people, you don't need to move people, you don't need to put yourself on a cruise vessel, you don't need to take a ferry uh, necessarily. Uh, that, I'm sure, will have a much longer impact and a much deeper impact and maybe also a structural impact. I wouldn't be surprised if people now these days rethink what about my personal health if I go in a cruise vessel with 5,000 people. I mean, I'm not saying they shouldn't, but I'm sure people rethink those kind of issues. Oh, yes, I'm pretty sure they will. Right, let's finish. Some cultural lockdown questions for you. What's, what's a good book to read during the lockdown? And, what, and what, what, what would you recommend in terms of TV binging to while away the hours? Oh, yeah, with no football around. That's a, that's a tough one. Well, um, book read. If you struggle finding motivation for, for taking the measures needed, I recommend uh, Kelling McCormack's The Road. I mean, basically, that's, that's the true ap apocalypse. I mean, and it's a fantastic book, but it's just dark, dark, dark. And, and uh, so if you're sitting home and thinking, I mean, should I really apply to all these measures? Read it and you will. <laughs> uh, but maybe on a more positive note, uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm just started now on um, a book by Hans Rosling called Factfulness, uh, which is basically that all our biases about what's going on in the world are wrong. So also, I think with COVID, we just don't know yet. Um, and he is basically using a whole book telling us that everything we think about poverty, about world going forward the world is developing it's all wrong we all think it's going slow but it's actually going faster than ever so factfulness by hans uh, rosling strongly recommended fantastic book uh, when it comes to binging of of series i mean there are a lot of them out there so i i i'm sure most are uh, yeah but there's one actually uh, israeli palestinian show on netflix called Feuda, uh which is truly showing i think it's a very interesting well done well played but it also shows that in these kind of conflicts they're only losers they just lose in different ways and and uh, there's i just saw I, the reason why i remember i saw yesterday that season three is now out so uh, if you really want to see something where you can both learn and be be entertained found out on netflix pretty good brilliant thank you very much indeed lassa we'll be back next week and in the meantime everyone stay sane and sanitized thank you mm -hmm.